This is the motivational workshop that A Circle have put together to help with motivating individuals, teams, and organizations around Oslo, around Norway, and around the world. It's basically built up as a 45 minute workshop, can be delivered probably in 15 minutes, and we're going to explain. Uh, the different points on the sheet that we're sharing at the moment, uh, the motivational workshop. It's got uh, about six or seven points with some exercises through. First, let's give a quick intro to the following people. Mr. Avon, say hello. Hello. Okay, say a little bit more than hello. Who are you, Avon? Hi, I'm Avon. I'm uh, currently working with uh, Eight Circle in uh, many projects, delivering motivational workshops, delivering courses and doing whatever it takes for people to have just a little bit better day at work. Mr. Trond, say hello. Hello. And, and who are you, Trond? <laughs> I am Trond. Uh, I work with uh, A Circle on uh, different uh, projects, and I also fix people at my clinic in Oslo. And uh, yeah, do a lot of fun stuff to uh, try to help people and uh, make life better. All right, and last but not least, we have the one, the only, the amazing Mr. Guy Dissonair. Hello, Guy. Hello, guys. And, and I'm Guy, and I'm doing uh, fun projects together with the, the guys that you just uh, said hello to or heard hello from, and uh, helping people, individuals and teams and uh, companies uh, per, perform better. Great, so this is a speeded up version of this motivational workshop point to bullet or bullet point one on this list. It says actually the only way is up. But this is version eight of our motivation workshop. We've uh, started with one and there's a free license on this. So it's free to share, free to improve and free to do whatever you want with as long as it stays free. And the bullet point on number one is the only way is up. And this was the song that we actually played this morning in a workshop and uh, we had people singing along with us. And it's basically about not going down into uh, what's known as the vicious cycle. We've all had that friend at the cafe who's complained, like no matter what happens, we just get stuck and we're going down. This is trying to find the way up. And uh, at the moment, uh, we're, we're stuck in this, uh, this crazy situation. Everybody's at home and we don't have this, uh, this uh, being as sociable as we were before. So the only way is up points to this idea that there's the opposite of the vicious cycle, which is something called the virtual cycle, which lifts us up higher. And basically it's looking at life as learning experiences. The first person I call in for this is Mr. Guy Deeson. Guy, give us some thoughts. Well, uh, some thoughts about this is that, uh, I mean, people know that when they're getting into the vicious cycle and everything is going against them and they feel that uh, whatever they do, something else is going to happen, which is also bad. And uh, they have no idea how to get out of that. And there is one thing you can do, and that is individually for everyone, there is one specific thing you can do that will bring you out of this vicious cycle and over to a virtuous cycle. And that could be anything from taking a walk, uh, helping uh, a friend, uh, doing something. Just one simple thing that will get you out of that vicious cycle straight away. And uh, we tend to focus on getting the person to actually help somebody else. Because then the focus goes away from oneself, away from trying to be interesting, over to being in, uh, or trying to be interested more than interesting, getting the focus outwards. And the way to do that is to try to help somebody else. The best way to help somebody in trouble is to get that person to help somebody else. And that leads into this, uh, this learning, this virtual cycle up over. That's basically what we mean by the only way is up that point one about this, uh, about this, uh, because it's called a motivation workshop, but uh, this is, this is can either be, um, experienced as motivate me and people are attending workshop looking to be motivated or we try and flip the focus around to get people to motivate others number two on this list it says the one thing energize habits 30 50 100 one thing that i started about eight years ago was doing something called 100 day projects so i've done 100 days of reading 100 days of writing 100 days of running 100 days of keto diet 100 days of vegan uh, lots and lots of 100 day projects and I'll let Ivan talk in this one about the present 30-day habits that we're on at the moment. Go. 
Thank you. So it's very easy to, easy to slip into a vicious cycle, but you have to step into the virtual cycle. So using habits could be very beneficial. Uh, the challenge we do now is uh, 30 days of cold showers. And I find that to be so interesting because no matter what habit you do, you just have to do one habit. It's all about focusing on one thing. And that's kind of the way back when it's kind of crazy around us. It's about focusing on one thing at the time, which is very beneficial. So uh, with uh, the cold shower therapy, it's so cool because uh, when we walk into the shower, all the thoughts pop into our head why we shouldn't do this, which is in everyday life. It's always thoughts that's just popping into our head all the time. So it helps us to just create one habit. And you don't have to do cold shower therapy, of course, but find something. It could be go for a walk with a dog, do some meditation, any kind of task that is on the right level. So it will push you a little bit. So you actually have to make, have to make a choice, but it doesn't have to be like uh, climbing, uh, making a rocket ship to the moon every day. It could be something that's manageable. That's something can, that can transfer into something when we're in our ordinary situation again. Brent. Rob, you've done some uh, crazy habits the last uh, couple of years. Give us an example. Yes. Um, my first time I remember doing a, a challenge for myself was uh, I did a fast for a month in the beginning of 2000. And the idea of not doing anything is also a habit. So it's changing, changing of uh, not eating and uh, um, doing that for a long period of time uh, makes the uh, you can be on top of things easier and build a confidence in uh, in that with uh, controlling uh, the situation and you can uh, choose to eat or not to eat and in that way you can uh, build up that you're controlling it it's not everybody around you or the world around you now, the yeah, good right. thing about cold showers, I would just like to comment on that because uh, cold showers is something that everybody can do. Uh, it's not like, oh, you can't do uh, this many push-ups. Maybe you don't even have arms, so you can't do push-ups. But everybody can do cold showers. It's, it's possible. And the thing about it, it's, it's uncomfortable. So you can train yourself to overcome uncomfortable situations by letting, letting yourself train on going from, oh, I'm, I'm totally resisting this. I don't want to go into the cold shower. It's, it's freezing, I hate it. It's all kinds of emotions and you're trying to resist it when you go into the cold shower the first uh, many times. But then as you train on accepting the coldness in the shower, uh, you get up to the next level on what I would call the rail scale, R for resisting, A for acceptance. And you can, gradually slip into accepting the fact that you're in a cold shower. You have to, otherwise it's going to be freaking horrible. And then when you are able to get into acceptance, you can train on liking it. You can find something about the cold shower that you can like. Maybe after a while you can try to like the whole experience. But then when you are able to like it, you can move one step up and go up to actually enjoying it. And that is where the rail scale really excels. Resist, accept, like and enjoy and every problem in your life is a problem that you resist so if you get up that rail scale with any problem that you have you will actually get the problem to vanish it will vanish when you like it it will definitely vanish when you enjoy it i just got a message from uh, tron tron has to run to a meeting and sorry it's okay it's okay just go uh, turn off your mic and go um well, it, it's it's I just think like uh, sometimes that uh, people around us say uh, we forget that we're living in Norway and uh, I think living in Oslo in Norway is like winning the lotto of uh, of places to live in the world and uh, it's such uh, we should be so grateful that we can choose to do a habit of cold showers every day it's like there's so many so many people across the world like okay you guys are going to do a habit of cold showers yeah yeah no problem come and live here for a while and there's even people stuck in like prisons around the world being tortured by cold showers they've had this uh, let's uh, let's accept this cold shower habit uh, for maybe a couple of years every day it's crazy um, but it's, uh, it's back to this point of, uh, of doing habits of what we have control over and what we don't have control over. And a lot of people are 
creating uh, mental issues at the moment because uh, about this corona uh, home uh, work from home situation and the coronavirus and uh, it's just getting back to what what have we got control over and doing something on uh, creating habits around what we, what we can have control over not what we can't and we can't have control over uh, this con this coronavirus uh, guy I want to add anything there yeah, it's uh, most people try to overthink and overanalyze everything in their life, and they're trying to do m too many things at the same time. And uh, some people have this idea that, yeah, but I'm good at multitasking. Well, one thing you should stop doing straight away is multitasking because uh, it actually brings down the efficiency tremendously. So if you try to do many things at the, at the same time, you spend a lot of mental energy on several things. And you don't get that mental energy back until you actually complete the tasks. So if you spread out very thin, you might have many uncompleted tasks on your hand. And therefore, you have a lot of energy spent unbeknownst to you, or maybe not you know it, but you can feel it somehow that uh, it, it's sort of spent. But it's better to do it serialized, do one thing, and then get that energy back when it's completed spend all the energy on the next thing and then get that back instead of spreading out thin because that gets you frustrated and stressed when you don't complete everything in a day so when i do my uh, i have a lot of projects going on at the same time but i only focus on one at, at one specific point in time and i always have this idea that make it as simple as possible it's basically the only thing i can do in life and uh, what i do with the projects is i have uh, two things on each project. I have the status, what I just did, or what I did previously, the last action done. And then I have action, which is the next action to do. So status and action. And I don't have large plans or gums, diagrams or whatever. I just do this status, what did I do last? And action, what am I going to do next? And to make it that simple makes it easy to just on this project, focus on the next thing that you're going to do. Focus on one thing at a time, serialize everything, do not do multitasking. It's like a lot of organizations that, uh, that we work with, uh, uh, so we, we hear that they're doing like 80 projects at the same time. Um, and the thing is that they're not, and this is good, this gets into the whole idea of, uh, of work in progress limits and Kanban and the whole area around that. But it's, uh, it's fun to bring this down into the individual uh, domain and focus. Um, and, and another thing about this habit is that at the moment there's a lot of people uh, stuck at home and they're letting this corona situation happen to them uh, and they're not they're not creating this effect so they're actually creating habits of watching Netflix for four hours a day habit and that's habit that's something they're training on uh, maybe unconsciously but they're training on it um, they're creating these default habits of uh, of of being of corona affecting them some way in life um, yeah I'd give a guy do you want to add anything to that or yeah it's a, you know everything you do a lot you become really good at uh, whether you know it or not and I think Ovin has a lot to say about that because Ovin has is an amazing person he has done so many different things I mean he was a American football quarterback he has done flair you know juggling like a cocktail with Tom Cruise and uh, he's done uh, skateboarding uh, at uh, you know national level and and all of these things at basically national or international level. So I know that Eugen has a lot uh, ha has done a lot of focus on on various things and done a lot of these things uh, over large spans in his life and getting better at everything. So Eugen, do you want to say something about that? Yes, please. I think it's so important to remember that nothing is done in the future or in the past. It's only what you do in the present moment that really counts, and that decides the future. So if the present, present moment is filled with Netflix, hey, then it's uh, going to be a lot of uh, knowledge about net Netflix in the future. But we tend to plan, uh, tomorrow we're going to do this, uh, tomorrow we're going to do that. And uh, because of this happened yesterday, it's more difficult to do this today, so I'm going to do it at a different time but it's all about what we do here and now like in regards to like flaring american football all those kind of things it's all the work that i did in the present moment the slow trying failing coaching training all those things are the ones that makes the difference so it's the ability to get shit done basically is to focus and get shit done that's what it all comes down 
down to. So if you have a, a view of where you're gonna be in, in the future and that doesn't add up to what you're doing right now, well, it's not gonna happen. It's that simple. I, I, have, I have something I'd like to say in, in this regard because I'm, I'm coaching, I'm the mental trainer of uh, perhaps the best uh, female biathlete, you know, skiing and shooting and skiing and shooting. It's a very strange sport here up in, in the northern part of, uh, of Europe, basically. And uh, we have been talking, this girl and I, about having goals and whether that is beneficial or not. Because in individual or even team sports, you have all this focus on, oh, we have to have a goal. We have to have a goal for the season, etc. Now, she had a goal of really acing it in the World Championship. She didn't have a goal on the rest of the season, winning World Cup uh, gold medals. However, she actually won, I think it was seven World Cup gold medals through the season, and she totally fucked up in the world championship and that was her goal so basically she won almost everything that she could win that was not on her goals list and she didn't achieve what she had on her goals list so so we are into this discussion now we're actually going to have a coaching meeting later today about should she actually have goals for next season or should she just do whatever she is doing right now enjoying what she's doing and training not because of a gold medal in the future but because training is so fucking cool and good for her and she loves it and doing what you love might be better than doing something for the future just because you want to achieve something in the future maybe achieving it right now maybe training on it right now or doing this habit right now should be self-beneficial in a way. It should not be because of something in the future. Uh, in regards to that, uh, that takes me back to when I played uh, American football. I had a, a quote on my arm that said, take what the defense gives you. Because you can be prone to try, try to overreach because you're trying to reach a big goal and then you're trying to do something that's not really there. And uh, with uh, Tiril, it's kind of interesting that she had the uh, end result in mind uh, instead of having the focus of doing the best thing right now all the time that makes it difficult because then it's it could go uh, circumstances could change anything doing just the best at this given moment is pretty much always the way to go and, and what this. people don't realize is that uh, having a plan or having a goal is a preconceived idea it is you right now thinking that you know better than you in the future so if you say if you have a promise or, or you have a plan or you have some idea of what is going to happen in the future then you're telling yourself that you know better now with less data about what you should do in a month than what you would will know in a month with more data it's quite interesting it's like if you, you should just maximize what you do right now with the data you have and if you plan too much in the future, that's setting yourself up for a loss because you can get disappointed when you have all these ideas of what is coming. Because right now you wouldn't know because you don't have the data that you will have in a month or a year. This, uh, this recording is going to be longer than 15 minutes, but that's okay. Uh, here's just a... We can cut it down. That's fine. We can cut, a... we can cut shit out. Here's another point. Um, this idea about having goals because that's always going to split people and it's very easy like some people like get like pretty geared up about that they have to have goals and i can go through life without having goals and others are like yeah hey, goals go goals and the goals not their goals and the goals not their goals and you've got goals blah 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 uh, but the thing is that uh, i've uh, I, I think we've all seen some uh, sports people uh, being caught for doping and one of the things that uh, that happens is that they come on tv and they start crying because they suddenly they tell the TV that uh, they can't do what they what they what they really want to do in life anymore. They've got a two year ban or a one year ban, and they're not able to do uh, what 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 means most of them in life. And I think that's always fun to watch and sort of like uh, start to wonder uh, what is it that they really want to do? Do they actually want to? play football is that what they want or they do want to win the gold is that is that the goal is the goal to actually just to play every day or is the the goal to uh is it to uh, to win money to win the gold what is there what is it uh, at the very bottom okay 
Yeah, or, or is it the the attention one gets? You know, is it is it like oh, I, I'm, I'm I want to be the star, I want to be interesting, uh, uh, or or is it just or are you actually doing it for fun? Now, most of the people that I've been coaching and doing mental training with who are athletes, uh, in the beginning, they just do it for fun. They are the up and coming rising star, and and it's not because they want to win the goal. It's not because they want to be the star. It's because they are just doing it for fun. It's all games and fun and play and everything and when you get up there it all becomes serious all of a sudden now people should realize that what got you there you, you should keep on doing that until it doesn't work anymore it's the same with the soccer team you're 10 minutes down you're 80, you're 80 minutes into the game and it's 10 minutes until it it it, uh, it ends and you're up to zero and all of a sudden the coach goes oh now we need to de play defensive football because now we're going to keep the lead. We're going to ride on the lead until we get to the 19th minute. And that is really strange because then people are, the, the team is then doing something that they didn't do for 80 minutes. They're going to change what made them uh, into 2-0 lead. They're going to change that and do something completely different and think that's going to work. Now, keep on doing what works. So if you are an up and coming star, just because you did it for fun, you played and everything, don't get serious about it. Don't go into, oh, now I need to win the gold every time. No, just keep on playing, have fun. And the gold is a reward for that. It's not a goal, it's a reward. It's crazy towards the end of uh, sports games that there's uh, five minutes left and the focus, get back to this word focus, and the focus changes from, uh, from trying to win the game to avoid losing the game or avoid giving away the lead that we have. It's pretty crazy. Uh, next point on the list here, it says five people, mumps and paps, and then a sub uh, point of that, surely you're joking. This is a, where this, this motivation workshop has totally flipped uh, the focus. Uh, the first couple of points is how to, how to get motivated, how to focus, how to, how to uh, build up this confidence of doing one thing every day and have these habits. And then we just totally shock people. And this is where we get into the, uh, this workshop being, for many people, uh, and we had one this morning that uh, people uh, uh, jumped into this exercise. There's probably a couple that don't do it, but it's, a, it's an exercise that's unforgettable for the person doing. And it's probably even more unforgettable for uh, the people receiving. Mr. Ivan, do you want to go? Yes. It's been so fun to have... Uh, sorry about that. It's been so fun to have... Uh, this uh, workshops and seeing what people do with the uh, five people they want to lift higher uh, where uh, mama and papa should be on the list uh, to call them and say you are the most amazing person I have ever met because of you I have the ability to even complain at what you do what you say to me all those kind of things and it's been so fun having this in the workshops because uh, people you, when they come back and put on the cameras again you can just see a complete different face it's something they've experienced something so you have people that were sitting like this uh, in the beginning of workshop now he's sitting like this and uh, all and so much emotion that when the has been going through their body it's been so cool okay. Yeah, it's it's the, the, the epitome of, or the, the, the summit, or the, the, the example of uh, how you can uh, motivate somebody by making them motivate somebody else. Because, uh, again, uh, trying to help somebody who is in trouble, make that person help somebody else. So it is uh, going from inflow, 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 give me something, give me motivation, or lift me up over to, hmm, Let's just not focus on me. Let's focus on lifting my mother, lifting my father, saying something I should have said and that I will regret having not said when they die. So doing that thing is so beneficial, not only for mom and dad, who is completely taken by surprise by a son and daughter calling and saying they are amazing, but also by the person saying it because they will get the energy from helping somebody else, not sitting there and trying to get lifted which is something that you cannot really have much control over. So it's a, it's a very interesting exercise. And just to uh, explain the sentence and give it for anybody that wants it. And uh, the reason that mama and papa are there is that they're usually the most difficult uh, on this list of five people that you can genuinely lift higher. And by that, we mean that you start talking to them and at the end of the conversation, they're a better place. And usually then mama or papa are one of the toughest. 
Um, uh, and even if mom and papa are gone, uh, they've passed away, you can set a, a chair in front of you and just pretend that they're sitting on the chair and deliver this, uh, this sentence. A sentence is basically something like this, mama, you are one of the most, probably the most amazing person that's ever been in my life. For many years ago, you decided to uh, jump into bed, have some action with my father, and nine months later, I was born. And I've grown up, and now I'm at a stage where I can be critical uh, about things in life. It's very easy to complain, and sometimes I'm even critical of you as a person. And I criticize you sometimes straight to you, and sometimes I talk behind your back. But still, uh, I want to thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to sit here and complain and be critical about you and about life. And that's it. And then you say it actually once again. They say, what? Or something like that. Or they start crying. And then you say, um, I, I, have to, I have to actually, I'm in this workshop right now where we've taken a five minute break in the workshop and I have to say the sentence again. And then you say everything again. Exactly. You just go repeat and say it again, just in case they didn't get it the first time and they weren't totally ready. That's the, that's the sentence that most people have called their mothers or fathers. We've had the response. Some people have called their sisters and they came back on the camera and they were crying, a uh, couple with their brothers. Uh, but everybody's got somebody around them that you can do this. And it's, uh, it turns this workshop into what we would call positively unforgettable workshop. Ivan, did you raise your hand there? Or? Yeah. Go. Yes, I did. I tried, tried to use it. So um, I like these kind of things when it comes to helping other people because you, if you're going to help a friend and you get them to help someone else, you take them away from being a victim. You take them away from being a victim and actually, actually fixing themselves in a way. And that is such, so, more, uh, such, uh, so much more powerful. And it makes me think about the uh, book I read about Arnold Schwarzenegger. He talks about parents, uh, even though no matter how bad your parents were, they tried to do their best. Even though if they were drug addicts beating you in the evening, they tried to do their best. And it might not be very good. But the big thing here is now that that's your problem to fix. Whether you like it or not, that's now yours. And you're the only one that can fix it. So it's nice to be thankful for whatever you got. And then say, is there anything I need to, to fix? Anything I need to do here? You are in charge of doing it. And this is such a nice way of, uh, of taking that step. Run. Okay, so I just uh, run through these points just like in 10 seconds. Number one, that was that you can get this virtuous learning cycle. Number two, you can get a habit and do something every day that gives you energy. And number three, then you list up the five people that you can, that you can actually call during this workshop and deliver that sentence. And the surely a joking is because we actually mean it. We stop talking in the workshop and give people four or five minutes to call something and come back online. The next bullet point here is the last day at work. This is from originally uh, the idea is from the book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where the guy goes walking past the church. He sees the funeral and he wonders who the funeral is for. And he walks in and it's for himself. He sees himself lying in the coffin and there's four people going to give a speech today. And those four people are... Uh, a family member, a colleague, um, your neighbor, and somebody from the local community. And the exercise in the book then, of course, is to write those speeches. And then every single day you can do one thing that gets you towards the ideal speech. Uh, so this is like uh, the last day of work is the day that you're going to quit work. What do you want people to read up about you? Guy, want to add anything? No, I, I think that's uh, that's an interesting exercise because um, often when I do projects, I try to uh, sort of envision the, an ideal scene and I describe it in in a short story, usually one or two pages, and it's the same exercise really, and and here it becomes very personal. You write the speech of your day, last day at work, your exit, and what do you think uh, or what do you want people to remember you for? What kind of a foot print should you leave when you, when you leave so it's um it's, it's an interesting exercise because people think about stuff that they don't think about in everyday life they think about hmm oh oh how do i make an impression on other people a positive impression not just something that looks nice but how do you actually create value for other people so that they will remember the value not just me because i was funny but the value that i brought to their lives Amen. 
and with remembering that nothing happens in the future, nothing, uh, no change can happen in the future that we do. It can only happen in the present moment. So then you say, okay, I would like to have this in the future. I would like uh, my uh, colleagues, my boss, my, uh, my other team members to say this about me. What does that mean? What do you have to do today? What's the one thing you have to do today to be able to get that speech that you want? And I think that's the most important focus here. The last bullet point is called the perfect day. And again, I think I originally got this idea from you a couple of years ago. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, uh, it's an exercise that uh, is great. It's an empathy building exercise. So at the start, we've had how to motivate yourself and then how to lift up others. And then we have, we have this empathy building exercise at the end called the perfect day. And it's the, the exercise here. I think that has come most uh, that that the result of doing this exercise has come on social media. We've seen different organizations that's had this workshop. Uh, we've seen them posting videos uh, where they've described this uh, this perfect day, uh, the working office. Uh, we've had uh, people sending us emails about this. They've done this with uh, with children, with partners, with kids at home. Um, so it's a great empathy building exercise. Guy, do you want to explain it? Yeah, it's it's actually uh, something that um, that became very strong with me uh, many years back in uh, I think it was 2011 or 2012, 2011 I think, when I was alone for one month and uh, my then wife, which uh, we later divorced, and uh, this was the last sort of uh, pangs of panic uh, trying to pull the the marriage together. So we bought a sailboat, and we wanted to go for a long. 14 months around the earth uh, sailing trip with the kids to sort of salvage the marriage, to salvage the family. So uh, a part of that was, okay, so we have to take the kids, uh, you know, three kids uh, across the Atlantic. And uh, we didn't know how that would be. We'd never done that type of sailing before. So Katrina, and my wife, she went on uh, her own with a crew and sailed for 21 days across the Atlantic. And I was alone with my three kids. And I, I, the first day I went like, okay, so how do I do this? I mean, I'm completely alone. There is nobody else to, to rely on, no other adult in the, in the room. So I sat down with my three boys and I said, okay, so what is the perfect dad? So I talked to Benjamin, who was the smallest, uh, youngest. He was, I think, five or six. No, it was actually four or three. And, um, and I asked him, so what is a perfect dad? What do you want a perfect dad to be? So I got that from him, and then I got Jonathan, <coughs> a few years uh, older, and then uh, Nicholas, who was, I think, 11 at the time, the oldest one. And I got each one's viewpoint of what a perfect dad was. And then every day I told them to score me from zero to 10 as a dad. How was the, the deliverance of the, the daddy services today? And uh, then uh, if there wasn't a perfect 10, I also asked them, so how can I be a perfect 10 tomorrow? What should I change in order to become a perfect dad tomorrow? And every day for a month, I did this. And then at the end of the month, I, I asked them at the, the last night before Katrina came home, I asked us, okay, so give me a sum summary then. How well was my daddy services delivered through the whole month? And uh, Benjamin, he went like, oh, a million, billion, trillion something. And uh, that was just the words he had heard, I guess, from his bigger, bigger brothers. And I said, okay, so, okay, so you give me a 10, that's fine. Well, what about you, Jonathan? And Jonathan, he was this, he is the philosopher in the family who at the age of five came home and said, daddy, do you believe in reality? And we got to talk about double slit experiment and particle physics and alternate realities and, and multiverse and everything. Uh, but at this point he said, oh, I'll give you a nine. And I went like, ah, oh, why not 10? Well, nobody can be perfect. Okay, fine. And then Nicholas, what do you give me? Oh, I give you a nine. Why? Because there was a quarrel between Benjamin and Jonathan. And you were not really good at handling that. And your excuse for not being good at it afterwards was not really good at all. So I'll give you a nine. Okay, that's fine. Katrina came home. She asked, how did it go? How was the one month? I said 9.33. That was how it went. So, so this is the idea to measure to make it uh, to make it measurable and also not just measure for your own sake but actually talk to your customer talk to your customer and figure out what is your delivery how is it like and how can you improve day by day and actually focus on what you can do and what you cannot do is not interesting so this is where it actually came from from my part Ivan, want to share something here 
Yes, it's so nice to uh, use this exercise because now when things are changing around us, it's very difficult to know what our delivery is. Uh, what should we do? So like if you're at home, uh, having home office, uh, it's very cool to be able to ask, uh, ask your uh, teenage uh, son, what's your perfect day with me? What is your perfect day with me? Could you please describe that day? And then you will get all these tasks. Uh, all these possibilities and some of them they won't be uh, possible to do either it means that you have to go to a place where there's a lot of people shouldn't do that or it could be go to the moon uh, not possible yet uh, or it could be something that's uh, actually doable so then you have to do all those things and the ninth nice thing with this exercise is that this takes to describe this on a A4 piece of paper, it takes pretty much 30 minutes. So it's a very good trick to have if you're going into a 30 minute and you can't be disturbed. So then you can uh, just say, okay, write down the perfect day with your father uh, to me, please. So I know what to do. And it's so good. So we got so many good feedbacks from this uh, workshop because people actually connected again uh, with their uh, spouse, with, with their son, daughter, just because they asked, how, what can we do together? What can we do together? And then actually doing those tasks gets them closer. Right? Great. Uh, I have no idea how long this has gone on for, but at the, at the very end, uh, it's just, uh, let's just do 15 seconds, okay? 15 seconds. You've got one thing you can say, one thing that you can share. Yeah, you want to get motivated, do this. So, Guy, you're going to say something, and Ivan, you're going to say something, and I'll go last, which is probably the toughest, because the last one is like, oh, no, mine was just taken, oh, no. So, uh, okay, who wants to go, who wants to go I, first? Now, I, I have one thing I, I want to say before we do those 15 seconds, and that is, uh, if people are watching this or, or listening to this, uh, they might think that this is the motivational workshop. Now, we have done this like 20-something times, and it's always different. This is, this is not the workshop. This is just one example or one instance of a workshop like this. So every workshop becomes different. It becomes different examples. It becomes tailored to the audience. So uh, anybody seeing this and thinking, oh, oh I got this. No, uh, the actually tailored workshop that you will be in with your company, if you are in a company, that will be actually quite different. It will be the same slide, but it will be different examples and tailored to the audience that we have. Now, now we can do the 15 seconds. Uh, uh, just, to, just to say something in that, that this is version eight of the page. The first version that was also released on LinkedIn after we did that workshop, uh, I was called up later in the day from the person that had booked this in for that workshop and said, okay, are you ready? Here's some feedback. And I was like, well, here's some feedback for your workshop this morning. I was just like, bam, 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 bam. So workshop. And I was like, wow, that was really cool. And she actually said to me, yeah, do you want to improve your workshop? And I said, yeah, I do. So there you go. There's some feedback. So it's like, uh, so we actually uh, took away uh, a couple of, the, actually the first workshop where there's way too many points to go through. Uh, and this is probably going to get simpler and simpler. Uh, probably the best thing would be to get this down just to one point. Uh, that would be the, the absolute uh, the absolute dream of this, uh, which will probably happen. Uh, workshop 21 this morning. So we might get it down to one, uh, one beautiful point at the end. Okay, I, have got one. I, yeah. I can do my 15 seconds. I can do okay. my 15 seconds and that will be that one point. Okay, go. Ready? Okay. Get your ass up and help one person with one thing that they think is really valuable. That's how you motivate yourself and that's how you bring it along to other people as well. Okay, I think that was 12 seconds or something. That was really nice. Uh, Ivan, you got your 15 minutes of fame. Go for it. 15 Two seconds. seconds. Minutes. 15 Perfect. seconds. 15 there seconds. We 15 go. seconds. <laughs> okay, 15 seconds. Starts now. I'm going to take one of you, your uh, sayings, Bren. Be more interested. Have the focus outwards. Don't become focused on yourself and slip into the vicious cycle. Be more interested. See what's out there. What's my opportunities? And do something with the opportunities. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow, you guys took the good ones. Uh, okay, here's mine. <laughs> Uh, where you live, go walk into a cafe and knock on a glass and say, anybody in this cafe need any help from me right now? Let's go. 
and then you deliver that's that. perfect yeah that that's that's really good yeah okay. and and anybody listening to this right now should do that one thing and let's see what happens and then bring some feedback back to us and see tell us how it went Good. Uh, I think this is okay. And this is basically it. Uh, we put this out uh, online and anybody who wants to improve, build, uh, share, uh, do whatever they want to do with these exercises. And uh, of course, um, really could anybody that wants to use this and share it back with us. Perfect. Are we done? We're done? We're done. Okay. How do I stop recording this? <laughs>